In this video I'm going to be going through the structure of materials. This is relevant to the year 11 um, preliminary course for engineering studies the um, for the HSC and uh, this is part of chapter 1 uh, for year 11. Uh, we're going through the filling in the blanks for the booklet. So the first thing is that everything is made of atoms. There are about a hundred different kinds of atoms called elements hydrogen, carbon, and iron. In other videos, I'll talk about how, so there are natu 92 naturally occurring elements. There's an extra one, uh, plutonium. And then after that, they're all synthesized. That means they're made by humans. Americium 95, element number 95, is uh, a thing you can pick up and touch. Um, and I'll talk about a guy who touched a bit too much of it and got radiation poisoning and uh, while well, he was trying to make his own reactor. But... As we start getting into the really big elements, so up to like 110, 118, that these now only exist for such a small amount of time that we really, they, they only, they de decompose so quickly that we don't really, um, then they're, they're synthetic and they're not something you can pick up and hold. Okay. Atoms are made up of even smaller things, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Technically, if you're big brain, you could say that protons and neutrons are both made out of quarks, but for our purposes, for year 11 engineering, we're happy with protons, neutrons, and electrons. Most things are made of combinations of atoms, and atoms chemically fixed in a ratio or called compounds. So we have examples like salt, water, and carbon dioxide. So for salt, uh, when we talk, salt is a general term, but when we're talking about table salt, the one that we eat, that's sodium chloride, which is written capital N, little a, capital C, little l, water, which is H2O, and carbon dioxide, which is CO2. A mixture is a combination of atoms and or compounds with no fixed ratio. Um, so dirt, milk, air, um, seawater, they're all um, mixtures. Protons have a positive charge. If you want, you're allowed to write the plus sign VE. Uh, um, I'll mark that correct, for, but I wouldn't write that in the HSC. Electrons have a negative charge. Neutrons have no charge. An element is defined by its number of protons. So when I was referring to uranium as being 92 or pro, um, plutonium as being 94 or um, uh, hydrogen as being number one, that, that's based on how many protons it has. Atoms typically have the same number of protons as electrons, but they can gain or lose electrons. Protons and neutrons both stay in the middle of the atom called the nucleus. Uh, the nucleus is the center of the atom. And the electrons, they fly around in the outside. They orbit. Um, in the Copeland book, they also talk about uh, the relative size and mass of neutrons versus protons and, and electrons, but not something that I go into in any, any detail in my tests. Uh, the electrons orbit in, a pattern, in patterns called shells. Um, they also can be called orbitals. So um, I may or may not have played the song um, Halcyon by Orbital. Um, we are most interested in the outside of shells that hold the valence electrons. In French, it's valence, and I've talked about Holly Valance. She was a singer. Um, she named herself, she changed her last name to be the, um, the kind of sheet that you put on the bottom of your bed. Uh, there's a city in France called Valence. There's a, a whole city and a whole state of Spain called Valencia. But for us, valence electrons are the electrons on the outside. Now, hydrogen and helium, they have a um, an outer shell of only that can only hold two electrons. The inner, the inner shell, I guess, the first shell, only holds two electrons. But for us, we're just going to learn that the outer shell usually holds eight. Um, that's probably the easiest thing to remember, and certainly for our level. An element with a full outer shell is considered stable. So the noble gases, neon and xenon, they have a full, they have a complete outer shell with eight electrons. So because of that, they don't really want to bond with other elements. They just do their own thing. For the moment, the elements we will worry about need eight valence electrons to be stable. Most elements have too many or too few valence electrons, and they are unstable. They will act to gain, to lose or gain electrons, so that they can have a full or complete, but a lot of students write stable, and I'd mark that correct, uh, um, outer shell. Metal elements, so iron, not not to be confused with a word we're going to come up later, so um, I play a song iron butterfly from, uh, well it's iron butterfly, but in the Simpsons it's iron butterfly. Uh, aluminium, which I have a song about, that's the call me owl song. I don't have a copper song, I need a copper song. Anyway, 
We have a, they only have a few valence electrons, so it is easier for them to lose electrons in order to be stable. Lithium, I have two lithium songs. Uh, one is like a good song by Nirvana, and another one is just a crazy song where it's like they just made up the lyrics by you know, flipping randomly through a dictionary. Lithium is a metal that has only one valence electron, so it is said to have a valency of one, which is written as, you don't write the one, you just write the positive. The idea is that when you lose an electron, it's kind of like when you lose a toxic friend, suddenly you're, you're, you're really positive, things in life are good. Magnesium has a valency of two, that means it has two electrons in its outer shell, and it's written as Mg plus two. It's lost two um, uh, electrons, or it wants to lose two electrons. It is easier for non-metals, for example oxygen, to gain an electron in order to have a full outer shell um, of eight valence electrons and become stable. Oxygen has six valence electrons. It needs two more to become stable, so it has a valency of two, which is written as O2 minus. That means it wants to lose, uh, sorry, it's short two electrons. It needs to gain two. Um, there are three main ways that atoms can become stable. When atoms lose or gain electrons, uh, it is stable, but is no longer neutral and it's called an ion. A metal that loses its valence electrons will now have more protons than electrons. Okay, it says there's three main ways they'll become stable. We're going to talk about that later down here in bonding. So just in case you're wondering, what, that's kind of a bit of a hanging sense. I don't like that. I should have moved that down. When an atom loses or gains its electron, it's no longer stable. It's now called an ion. I-O-N. Uh, anyone who's seen Ti uh, um, Star Wars, there's TIE Fighters. TIE Fighter stands for Twin Ion Engine. And um, that's something that people have thought about. A uh, way we can make rockets is by shooting out ions. Uh, there are, um, yeah, anyway. And a metal that loses its valence electron will now have more protons and electrons, and it will now have a positive charge. When a nonmetal gains an electron, it will have a negative charge. I mentioned the toxic friends above, so that maybe makes more sense now. Uh, the earliest atomic theory, this is no way, none of this stuff here is in um, the test, but I will just talk about. So there's a three-minute philosophers, which I really, I think he's pretty good. Um, there are some swears, but not in this one, uh, where he talks about the first person to come up with the idea of elements, uh, and that's this guy um, Empedocles. Then follow, that was followed up by a guy called Democritus, and he came up with uh, the, fir the idea that things atoms couldn't be cut so atom means can't be cut a meaning not and uh tom meaning cut like so if you get a um appendectomy it's where they take out your appendix if they take you get a tonsillectomy that's where they take out your tonsils dalton is credited with credited with the first modern atomic theory in ke chemistry so that's a more recent guy i might i might oh here we go democritus and dalton and there's a valance and there's Holly Valance, there's the city of Valence, there's some songs about lithium, there's Iron Butterfly, there's the orbital song Halcyon, there's the guy who played too much with Americium. The line that I mentioned earlier that everything is made of atoms comes from the most famous uh, physics textbook, the Richard Feynman Lectures on Physics from Caltech, which you can read the entirety of um, in there. Uh, I might mention that stuff a bit later, but probably not. Um, we'll see how we go. What atom, what are, so here are the questions, our review questions. What are atoms made up of? Our answer is going to be protons, neutrons, and electrons. Obviously, you know, many things uh, that we say in high school are only true from a certain point of view, but from our point of view, that's sufficient for um, all of engineering studies. Identify the subatomic particle with no charge. That would be a neutron. The um, location of the proton is in the nucleus. What is What are valence electrons? They're the electrons that um, are in the outer orbital or the outer shell. What kind of charge do metal ions have? Well, they've just lost electrons, and electrons are negative, so they become positive. It's like they've lost two to they've lost some toxic friends, and they're now feeling good about themselves. Okay, I will also discuss bonding, and I will leave it there. Crystals. Okay, so bonding ionic bonds form crystals of metal ions with non-metal ions. Um, so the idea is that NaCl uh, table salt, um, sodium is a metal ion and chlorine is a non-metal ion and they join as in this lat lattice we're going to see lattices down below later right so they they basically line up in a set of crystals um you know in another video i'm sure i have uh covered this and 
So table salt and rust are both examples of ionic bonds. Ionic bonds typically dissolve in water. Ionic bonds are poor conductors of heat and electricity. I have another line there, but I'm not going to read it out loud because I don't want you to, to think that that's going to be something that you can be tested on. Covalent bonds, um, atoms, usually nonmetals, can share their electrons in covalent bonds. For example, H2O, water, the dioxygen we breathe, O2, and the ozone in the um, outer atmosphere, O3. Organic chemistry, which includes all living things as well as plastics and petrol, are based on carbon-based covalent compounds. We don't really talk about organic chemistry. If you do chemistry, they might talk about organic chemistry. Um, it's interesting because the word organic has a different meaning when we talk about food. But I find that interesting because if you eat an organic banana, all bananas are organic, the same way that all petrol is organic or all plastic is organic. So Paleo Pete, um, he uses a different definition to organic than what I use. Um, so we're going to talk about metallic bonds, uh, the crystals of metal ions surrounded by a cloud of electrons. Uh, the free, free electrons allow for good conductivity. Alloys um, will be covered later when we talk about solid solutions. Um, okay, so the idea is we have all these positive ions and we have um, electrons that float around. In another video, uh, I will talk about dads at a picnic, the, um, the analogy that my mum used. Secondary bonds are the bonds between mo molecules. So there's also known as intermolecular forces. That's what Copeland calls them in his textbook. Um, I don't think I can be bothered finding that page. But... Um, they so often when we have um, secondary bonds are what join the chains of thermosofting polymers that we'll learn about later, but they don't. Uh, we have full covalent bonds for thermosetting polymers, but the example is things like water. So what joins those water molecules together is secondary bonds. They have different names. There's Van der Waals forces. That's the first name. For political reasons, that was later called London forces. These days we're probably more likely to call them secondary bonds. Um, there's also more extreme versions, polar bonding and hydrogen bonding, but that's not part of this course, so you don't need to worry. Okay, explain why ionic bonds are brittle. Well, because, I don't know if I say this above, but with ionic bonds, if their um, their crystal is so rigid that if it's disrupted, it shatters. That would be a good enough answer. Uh, identify the engineering application of covalent bonds. That would be things like plastics and petrol. Polymers would be a better answer, but I will definitely accept plastics. Okay, that's it for this recording.